ever wonder where your grandparents might be spending their time and money these days? Well, you might want to check your local casino. Busloads of senior citizens are chauffeured to casinos daily. Some may be gambling away their pensions and even rent money. So we asked the question, are casinos targeting the elderly? It's a 16 by 9 investigation. We've all seen these casino ads on TV. Beautiful, upwardly mobile people drawn to the glitz, glamour and potential fortune awaiting them at their local casinos. But that's the marketing campaign you see on television. So what exactly is happening in this picture? This is a reality you don't see in the casino commercials, unless you visit a casino Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Senior citizens, some barely able to walk, making their trek to the slots and poker tables across this country. They are an essential and growing demographic for the casino business. I was suicidal. I was feeling so um, full of remorse and regret. I felt myself worthless and useless. 68-year-old Ken, who asked us not to use his last name, is a senior citizen addicted to gambling. He says he didn't start gambling until he was in his late 50s when his last child left the nest. He says he began to feel useless, so he hit the casinos. What I did is uh, I escaped, and I escaped to a casino where I could isolate and deal with my own thoughts. Ken says the casino staff and the people there became his new family. It's a surreal atmosphere. And one forgets about the pain of arthritis. One forgets the fact that the children and the grandchildren haven't visited them in a while. Ken eventually gambled away everything he ever owned, his house, his savings, and his family, which he admits now, wants nothing to do with him. I felt worthless. How could I do this to the people I loved? And Ken is not alone. He's part of a growing demographic that flocks to these casinos because the opportunity to get there is made so easy. In a three month long 16 by 9 investigation, we visited casinos across Ontario and we watched as busloads of seniors deliver elderly people to their doors for upwards of six hours and more. These individuals are lonely. They're looking for a social aspect and they want to be with their other friends. According to Casino Rama, based in Aurelia, just two hours outside of Toronto, 10,000 group buses, not all of them full of seniors, make their way to their casino each year, hauling about 450,000 people to gamble. The average patron is 55 years old, and that's just in one casino. Many of the buses pick up the elderly right outside their nursing home doors. We decided to take a ride with one group here at Villa del Zotto in Toronto. They have weekly excursions to various Ontario casinos. They all came, some barely able to walk. I call them my walking wounded. Anybody who has a difficulty, I try and get up near the front. Christina Hall coordinates casino visits for those at her nursing home. She's been doing it for eight years and says she loves the job. How exactly does it work? I work through the bus company and they, they do the bookings for me. And then I'm in touch with uh, the, the sales rep up there and I get together with her at times. And uh, I, as I say, I do everything through the bus company. Christina says she gets perks like dinner or show tickets from the casino for organizing these groups. The cost is only a dollar for the bus ride to Casino Rama and back. Each senior also gets a $20 food voucher and an electronic card that lets the casino track them and know exactly how much money they're betting. She admits her job is to make sure this group gambles. Otherwise, they won't be invited back. How do they know if you're gambling or not? Here, play your cards in the machines. And we have to tell them, please play your cards on the machines. You will not get credit for your points or for your cash back. 
it worries me and I wish people didn't gamble. Pal DiGiulio is the CEO of Villa Charities, including the one where Christina Hall lives. He is responsible for three senior buildings that house 750 elderly people. He says some of their residents have developed gambling problems and can't pay their rent. We have had to talk to a couple of people. As administration, we don't like it or we don't encourage. And there's another big partner in this casino game. It's the government. Casinos, slots and lotteries bring in almost $14 billion a year. Many government-owned casinos spend taxpayer money to subsidize buses to bring gamblers to their doors. In Ontario, the government hands out $2.43 a gambler. In Quebec, it's a whopping $7 a person. And in British Columbia, it's $3.75 that is subsidized. Other provinces wouldn't reveal how much they are subsidized, or they said they do not keep track of those records. Casino Rama, Falls View and Caesar Resorts take no government money and privately subsidize their own buses. They refuse to reveal how much money is given to the bus companies to bring seniors to their casinos. People of the province would rather see their tax dollars invested in long-term care facilities for seniors, good health care for seniors, uh, get a good quality of life for the, the people that literally built our communities and our province uh, than to see them being exploited and dragged to, uh, to, to casinos to, to fill the pockets of uh, of the uh, OLG. Ontario NDP leader Andrea Horvath says she's concerned about what casinos are doing to our seniors. Some of the most vulnerable people in our society, seniors who are often very lonely, are being preyed upon uh, by the casinos in this instance. And, and I think we have to take a, a look at this and, and say, is this what, what society has come to? I was pretty shocked by some of the things that you're talking about. Judith Wall heads the Advocacy Centre for the Elderly. She says the government can't ignore the problem they're creating. It seems fundamentally wrong, morally wrong, to take people who you know are lonely, will be kept captive without the bus taking them back, so they, they have to stay at the site, the gambling site, through that whole time. And now there are even more concerns about gambling in seniors. According to an Australian study that looked at the brain as it ages, elderly people are more likely to become addicted to gambling as they get older. Just like the muscles in your body, uh, your brain shrinks as you age, and one of the consequences of this brain shrinkage, particularly shrinkage in the frontal lobes, is that it more, becomes more difficult to control your behavior. This certainly opens the possibility that casinos are taking advantage of older adults. We contacted the casinos to get their side of the story, but they directed us to the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation, who sent us this statement. Ontario problem gaming prevalence rates show that older adults are less likely than other age demographics to have gambling problems, 2.2%. However, older adults are often on fixed incomes. We are concerned about the experience of any senior who may be experiencing a problem with their gambling. This spring, the Within Limits campaign, delivered by the Responsible Gambling Council, presented its boomers and gambling, time for a reality check, which focused on older adults. But for those who are addicted to gambling, not enough is being done. If the ATMs were moved from casinos, then that's responsible gambling. You come up with a certain amount of money. When it's gone, it's gone. You're responsible. The teller windows, they'll give you cash advances. They'll charge you 2%. They have all these. Those types of enabling only help accelerate the process of, of compulsive gambling.